Welcome back to Dylan with Sid Meier's Conversation, where we continue the Conversation of the Americas as the French. Helps us to wipe out the natives. Let's wipe out the natives. Let's work on artillery here as well. And an, and a colonist in Ironhold is now a proper statesman. Wonderful. Very wonderful. So these pioneers can bug out and go be somebody else, hang out outside. These guys can go over there. You know, I am going to need more musket production in order to arm my army. So artillery may not be the best choice. In that case, I think I should switch Gunny over to a... Got some more regulars added to the army. Big deal. I think I should switch Gunny over to a magazine instead. They're our primary source of muskets at the moment. Getting them to produce muskets more efficiently would be better. It doesn't increase the ratio of muskets, but it increases how many muskets we can produce per gunsmith. So we'll work on a magazine there. We have enough muskets on hand in Proxima and Safe Harbor to arm somebody. But we don't have any more after that. And this damn English Jagoon is still standing on our road between Safe Harbor and Proxima, which is annoying. But I can't block the road of anybody to allow our people to move past, because I simply don't have the standing military to do so. I'm not going to use a colonist to block the road or a wagon train and risk losing the colonist or wagon train. This farmer, I'm going to pull him out, I think. Let me think about that, actually. Maybe I set him up in Proxima, the lumberjack. Setting him up in Proxima would be a better choice, actually. So the lumberjack I need to send over to Proxima. We'll do that on the next turn. I'm going to see if I can't sneak this ore miner up to Gunny. It'd be a little bit more intelligent to use the horses, but I think I'll be okay. The natives aren't freaking out at the moment. Us repelling their little siege. Us repelling their raid got them to chill out slightly. In consideration of that, I should be able to move these statesmen around the Jagoons over to safe harbor. With the natives relaxing, I think that we can stand down our troops to return to their jobs other than the free colonist. We've actually got enough ore production that it might be worth putting the blacksmith on tool production over here in Ironhold. This farmer we can actually put to work producing food as well. Let's do that. And Gunny. So that greatly increases their food production. That puts them one step away from an efficient government. That's okay. We should be able to produce enough Liberty Bells that we can reach another revolutionary not too long. But because of that, we're going to leave this particular blacksmith on guard. And we've got a proper ore miner trained. Good deal. Going to set the ore miner from the schoolhouse into the mountains to produce some actual ore. And with the addition of the Liberty Bells over the turn, we can now support the blacksmith actually doing his job. So we're producing 24 tools per turn from the ore. Unfortunately, we can't quite reach the 28 tools per turn from the blacksmiths. And with this colonist trained in safe harbor, we can pull the fisherman from the college and send him elsewhere. There is a Dutch frigate just south of Ironhold that might be moving towards our privateer. That does apply some pressure to us to move the privateer north, or to at least keep an eye on the frigate just in case he moves further east. So let's take a look north to see if there's anybody that we can find. I don't see anybody. Nope. With the arrival of the lumberjack, we can set him up doing his thing on the river tile. Now we can produce plenty of extra lumber to ship over to other colonies. I wanted to start expanding our colonies, but with the upcoming war against the Iroquois, I think it might be best to just convert, say, this wetland forest into a swamp. Same thing with this wetland forest, and then we can mine both of these tiles for ore. In consideration of that, we're going to send an ore miner from Ironhold over to Proxima. That was extra. And we're going to work towards getting ore production on these two tiles. I wanted to leave these alone for the REF to land on, but I think we'll be okay with just letting them land on open terrain. Artillery gets a negative bonus on open terrain, so if they land here, their artillery will be more vulnerable, and their artillery is quite powerful. We could, however, also station troops on these tiles, and then force the REF to come into this spot right here, and then land on, say, the game tile or the mixed forest tile right there. Hey, hey, we got Simon Bolivar. Very nice, very nice. So we get that extra plus 20% to all of our colonies. Now I think there's a good chance that we might want to get, well, George Washington would be a very good choice. Let's go with George Washington. We do anticipate fighting the natives pretty soon. Although it's a good question as to whether or not we'll get Washington before we start the war. But fighting the war takes time, so Washington is the way they go. Let's go with Washington. We got ourselves a proper tobacconist set up in the tobacconist shop, so we'll pull the tobacconist out of the university. So we'll pull the tobacconist out of the university, set him up in the tobacconist shop. They will completely chew through our stores of tobacco, but 
That's okay, there's not much else that we can do for them at the moment. Thankfully, it looks like the English have stopped blockading our road between Safe Harbor and Proxima. But due to the nature of wagon trains, we won't be able to get more lumber and coats from Safe Harbor very rapidly, simply because they'll take another turn. With the return of our statesmen, we're going to put them into the town hall to start churning out a bunch of Liberty Bells that'll get in Washington faster and that'll help fix our revolutionary support here. Safe Harbor was our original town. I wanted it to be the primary town, but things change over time and Proxima is now the main town. Chances are that the REF is going to land at Safe Harbor though. With the Iroquois getting freaked out, they're now on blue alarm, which means they might send soldiers to us. Let's move this Pioneer into Gunny. We're gonna give the Pioneer some guns and some horses and keep him stationed here to defend. I wanted to give some horses to the ore miner and then send him over to Safe Harbor, but that'll have to wait until the next turn, most likely. We've arrived with our first extra set of ore miner, so we'll clear his specialty and then give him some guns. So yeah, we don't need him. We need him to become a Dragoon. So there's one Dragoon. I should hopefully be able to move one more over to Safe Harbor and then arm him as well. So we'll do that. You just got here from Europe, and now you're going to get ready to fight. There we go. We'll give the Pioneer and Ironhold some guns and horses as well, temporarily. We are going to get some more colonists arriving on the next ship right here though. So they'll be able to take up arms and Ironhold. And this farmer, I'm going to put him back onto farming. I should have done that a while ago. Not sure why I didn't. There's a lot of things to micromanage in this game, so things can slip through the cracks. The weaver, though, we can put him onto lumber mill. Because we don't have enough cotton on hand to convert into cloth, he might as well work at the lumber mill for a little while. And that Dutch frigate is just screwing around on the west coast, so I'm not too worried about him attacking our privateer. Ooh, there was a English merchantman that went right down here, just south of the frigate. Got us a little free colonists to arm up as a dragoon. I am going to do that. And then in Gunny, don't quite yet have enough muskets on hand to arm another dragoon. It's going to take a couple more turns. Instead of that, we're going to send the ore miners that we just received from Europe over to Safe Harbor to start working on ore production over there. I moved the fur trappers out of Safe Harbor as regular colonists. We're going to move the fur trappers over to Proxima to produce furs on the extra force bot that we have right here. Oh, no, 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 that is the farmer. Right there. Good deal, good deal. Once we remove the native village, we're going to have access to another tile, which is very nice. It'll be a broadly forest with our road, hopefully. We might end up destroying the road when we destroy the native village. I can't quite remember what happens. And the fisherman is going to go into the ocean and suddenly produce eight fish instead of six. Oh, because we're at 100%. Awesome, awesome. This ore miner has nothing to do. He can't mine ore. We could grow food or chop lumber, but I think we'd better off just assigning him to the town hall. Might as well. Every Liberty Bell counts. Alternatively, I could assign him to gun production, but we need some tools for the magazine as well. We do have plenty of tools for the artilleries down here too though, and we're not producing the artillery super fast. So I think what I can do is I can assign him to gun production instead, and now we, can, now we build 12 muskets per turn. I gotta somehow remember that I have a pioneer Dragoon in Gunny and a Pioneer Dragoon in Ironhold and swap those out for free colonists here pretty soon. Right now we have three Dragoons in Proxima, we have one Dragoon in Safe Harbor, one in Gunny, and one in Ironhold. We are almost at the point that we, be we can begin going on the offensive. We're going to go on the offensive first against this village right here, we're going to take it out and obliterate it if we can, and then we're going to swing north, take out this village because it's also next to Gunny and then come east and take out this village over here. Once we've done that, we should be okay with the Iroquois for the most part. They'll have to pass through the enemy Dragoons, which have a habit of blocking these northern areas. In fact, let me go ahead and move this Dragoon over to Ironhold and then stand down the Pioneer so I don't forget that he's actually, you know, Pioneer. We'll give him some tools uh, in a second. For now, he's just going to be a regular colonist. We'll also move a Dragoon up to Gunny to defend Gunny. They are in blue alert, which means that they're probably going to react to us and demand some payment, to which I'll reply with lit. I'm going to set Safe Harbor's production, even though we don't have any carpenters here, to I think an armory, so that we can start working towards artilleries here pretty soon. So we'll do that. Got a population growth in Proxima, so they can grab guns and horses and get ready to fight here pretty soon. I'm going to give the Pioneer and Ironhold some tools, 100 tools, and then have him go over to Safe Harbor to work on destroying these forts. 
chopping them down to become swamps, and then building roads. That'll cost 80 tools total. We'll have 20 tools left over to do something else, and that'll increase our ore production quite a bit. So we should be able to fuel our current need for tools, at which point we might want to consider training another blacksmith. We're actually almost already halfway to George Washington, and it's only been like three, four turns maybe now? Very nice. Oh, there's an English privateer that was over here. So what is this? So this is the Stamp Act. They're raising our tax rate by 8%. We would have to hold a proximate coats party, and then we could no longer trade coats. Well, we can't sell it to the natives, so I think that we kind of just have to accept this. And we got our first artillery. Awesome. First home build artillery too. Very nice. We can also buy it from Europe for, I think, 600 gold at first. I'm not sure if it goes up in price. It probably does. Do we want to continue building artillery here? I think our next objective is actually going to be maybe a fort. Alternatively, more artillery is never a bad thing. Let's do more artillery. The forts and fortresses are going to be more necessary for fighting the king's forces. All right, let's see if we can hunt down that privateer. There you are. Come on, get him. We got a 50% bonus, so we probably have about a 66% chance of victory. Ah, uh, well, at least he went back to Proxima for repairs instead of Europe. Let's see if I can see how long it's going to take him to repair. Four turns. Ooh, it usually takes eight turns in Europe. So it's half time to repair here at home, and you don't have to sail back from Europe. I think it's either six or eight turns to repair. And there she is, our first artillery, very nice. I am almost convinced that we should just attack the natives now, but let's think about this very clearly. We've got a hundred muskets ready to go. I think that we should just keep those on hand. Let's dump some of the lumber. We'll load up the muskets. We'll leave the horses for somebody to use later on. But we'll take the muskets down south as well as the cotton. I do some other micromanagey stuff with the trades to like get things really efficient. Like I move ore from Safe Harbor to Proxima, and then I move ore from Proxima to Gunny or Ironhold as necessary. Things like that, instead of going from Safe Harbor all the way to Ironhold, it's just better to drop it here than move it elsewhere first. Instead of muskets, I'm going to move the ore miner over to a lumber mill to increase our production of the magazine so that I can more efficiently make use of the gunsmith anyway. Now that I have an extra load of muskets ready to go. You know, after losing those three and a half hours of recorded footage, I was kind of depressed. Like, it's a lot of time to lose. I had fun, but playing the same thing again is kind of painful. But I'm having fun again. I really just enjoy this game that much. Maybe weird, maybe not. Coats all the way down to six. Ugh. They'll come back up in price a little bit though. Although I'm gonna have another load here pretty soon of coats too. We have 2,033 gold. We absolutely want to continue recruiting as many free colonists as we can. I do need two more to take up arms. Ooh, hardy pioneers. 660 gold. I think that's worth it. Let's do it. They come with their own extra tools, so that's like 700 gold plus a free colonist, which is like 600 gold. Well, Hardy Pioneer is worth more than a free colonist because he's trained already. Easy, easy one. I would take that choice any day of the week. Uh, hello, England. You're complaining about our privateers, I bet. Yep. I don't care. We're not gonna leave. Thank you. Go in peace, brothers. And I'll be back to shoot you in the face later on. Just not officially. I'm not going to officially shoot you. Officially, we did nothing wrong. They could actually attack Proxima right now because we have the privateer sitting in dock being repaired, but they would lose because of our Dragoons. I'll have to ensure that I always keep Dragoons on standby in Proxima if I have any privateers being repaired. So this is the English privateer, I literally cannot attack it even if I wanted to. Oh wait, I can! So I must not for some reason know that it's English? I guess because I attacked it recently, so get sunk bro. Ah, uh, only damaged, too bad. I told you I'd punch you in the face, England. I don't understand how the vision in this game works. I often see units moving around that I should have no reason to see. I guess it kind of represents um, reports of units moving around from across the world that you just kind of hear through the grapevine, perhaps. Let's drop the price of coats even more. Hey, hey, it didn't drop. Maybe cloth will drop? Nah, we're good. 1,677 gold. Let's think. We need some more recruits for guns. We're gonna need at least one, ooh, 652, no thank you. Let's train an ore miner. That leaves it for 1,077 gold. Getting another caravel might not be a terrible choice. We could purchase an artillery for 500 gold. I wonder if that's gonna increase in price. 
Let's buy one and find out. 600 gold, it does indeed increase. Okay. So this ore miner is going to get his specialty cleared to free colonists. We've got another free colonist that's about to be born and not too long in the colonies. We will increase our shipping fleet in not too long. Hey, George Washington, and we haven't even started fighting the natives yet. Awesome. So now anytime we have a combat with a unit that is not a non... With a unit that's not a veteran, they will automatically be upgraded to a veteran. Awesome, awesome. More regulars added, I don't care. The Iroquois have a lot of muskets. I saw like two or three armed braves just north of Gunny. We're definitely going to need a standing army at all times. The era of pacifism has passed. It is 1629. Jacob Fugger is the guy that removes all the boycotts, right? Yeah. I don't care about that. I have no interest in buying tools. The crap is too expensive. Fernando de Soto is lost city rumors. I don't care. Hernan Cortez. Actually, maybe not a terrible idea. And Juan de Sepulveda, he increases chance that subjugated Indians will convert. So to get converts in this version of colonization, you have to establish a mission and then attack the village that has a mission in it, which is weird. Let's go with Juan Cortez. We might be able to get him fast enough that we can get some treasures from the villages that we destroy, and we'll be able to send those treasures back to France for no cost. We might still pay taxes though, I'm not sure. Got a magazine built and gunning, awesome. So now, with a single gunsmith, we produce 14 muskets per turn, which is half of the tools that we can produce at maximum speed of 28, which we can actually meet without extra ore supplies from Safe Harbor, which we do bring in from time to time. As you can see, we have some spare ore down here. So what's next? I think in this particular instance, because this is gunning its north, it is going to be more at risk from the natives. It might be advisable to build a fort. Let's do that. So we'll upgrade the defenses of Gunny because it'll be exposed more. And we'll probably start working on upgrading the defenses of the other colonies as well. We have enough tool production that is worth it. And surprisingly enough, you can build a fort faster than you can build an artillery, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but the game is the way it is. I'm sure it's balanced around artilleries are supposed to be expensive because they are quite useful in combat. They're very good at defending colonies, and they're good at attacking too. Artillerys actually get an extra bonus when natives attack, they get like a plus 100% strength bonus when an Indian raid occurs, which is very nice. We were finally able to start working on cutting down these forests to form swamps, and the Pioneers should be safe over here. We have vision around Safe Harbor and vision around Proxima, so I should see any natives that are attempting to approach the Pioneer as he works. So the English have decided to land even more Dragoons on my coast. Wonderful. Very wonderful. There's a galleon actually right here that landed more dragoons right there. So now I have one, two, three, four, five dragoons of England, one soldier from England, and a Dutch dragoon that are just chilling out, drinking some beers, screwing with my people, pissing me off. Let's actually get the hardy pioneer that we have here to get off my boat and improve that forest right there into a swamp. That'd be very nice. And the free colonists, we can arm him with some guns. We now have two extra free colonists, which is perfect timing. Both of you will get ready to fight. The Iroquois are getting very alarmed. They're at double blue, which means that they're basically red. And we have some artillery that we can bring in too. We've only got some artillery in Proxima, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the artillery from Ironhold over to Proxima. And then next turn, I'm going to bring in the artillery from the Caravel into Proxima. And then we're going to nail the natives to the wall. They shouldn't have attacked me. They started it. I genuinely did my best to be pacifistic, and they decided, nope, we're going to fight. Is this an overreaction? I don't think so. We're going to get the privateer out of Proxima so that they cannot attack Proxima, and we're going to sink. Hmm, there's a galleon here, isn't there? Just behind the merchant man, I believe. Let's give it a shot. Yes, indeed. So we're at 12 versus 10. We've lost every battle against a galleon. Let's see if we lose one more. Hey, 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 we won. Oh, 100 muskets. I like that very much. I'll take the muskets and I'll take the tolls too. Oh, oh, oh very nice. Merchantman damage. What? Oh, we got the English galleon too. <laughs> Our army grows stronger. Thank you so much, England. I'm not going to thank you for blocking my river though and not allowing me to move out of my colony. I don't appreciate that very much. Let's go ahead and let's start working on a proper fort and iron hold. I think we've got enough artillery to deal with the natives. We'll finish the artillery in Proxima. 
and will of course build an armory eventually in safe harbor. Just not yet. Hey, thanks for the horses, Iroquois. Thank you. I'm totally not about to burn down one of your villages. Yay, more English dragoons. These guys are literally trying to like surround my colonies completely. They're going to force me to go to war. If they surround me completely, I won't be able to move my goods around. Once I take out the natives, I should have enough dragoons that I can secure my shipping lanes though, so they they can't stop me from at least moving goods. However, I'll have trouble expanding to new colonies. Although there's a good question as to whether or not I need to expand, I could just pull it off with four colonies. Perhaps. We got another ore miner, gonna clear his specialty. There we go. Going to bring the privateer on home and drop off these tools and muskets. With those muskets available, we can now say, Welcome to the war, soldier. Grab your gun. And of course, I continue to be surrounded by the freaking people. Wonderful. The Iroquois are very alarmed. They should be. In fact, I think now is the time. Now is indeed the time. Goodbye. We have 7 strength plus 50% versus braves with 1 plus 50%. That is 10.5 versus 1.5. Plus there's actually a hidden negative for anybody that does not have a rifle. I think in this case they get the negative of minus 50% because they don't have rifles. The game doesn't tell you this for some reason, but a guy that investigated the game's like files with the debug mode found it out. Goodbye. French artillery. Take them out. Destroy them. Do we have any other artillery ready to go? I thought we had more than that. We should have one more somewhere. I thought we had three. I don't think it matters. French Dragoon, do your thing. Take them out. We should have 4.5 versus 1.5. Oh, in reality, this 50% should kind of get knocked out by the negative 50%. So they should be gone. Hard to veteran. Awesome. Their village is not gone yet, so we just keep hitting them repeatedly. Take them out. Alright, alright, alright. Got some veteran Dragoons. Very nice indeed. I've actually got so many freaking wagon trains, I can't get the Dragoons that I need rolling. I'm gonna have to temporarily move some wagon trains out of the settlement so that I can access more of my forces. Attack. Burn the village down. There we go, village gone. Now I can make use of the land. So I built another artillery in Proxima. I'm gonna switch over to a fort next, and we'll get that built a lot faster than an artillery. With the destruction of the village south of Proxima, we're now going to march to destroy the village just southwest of Gunny. So the army will move that direction. And I'm swapping out my veterans for my non-veteran dragoons in my other cities. So that my non-veteran dragoons get a chance to get into combat and get upgrades to veteran. We're now in a position to attack the village. Let's see if we want to take that fight. Yes, yeah, so we're absolutely going to attack them. We have a major advantage. They have a rifles negative of minus 50% that's not displayed. We should win every fight that we do. Yes sir, we won. And we're just going to keep on nailing them repeatedly. After four battles, the village is still there. We'll finish them off possibly on the next turn. Although I could probably just get this one Dragoon in the gunny to attack. Let's bring them down. And the village is gone. There we go. After that combat, our army now consists of eight veteran Dragoons and four artilleries. I also made a wonderful discovery while reading about colonization on the internet the other day. That apparently, because we have Benjamin Franklin, what we can do is to deal with these Dragoons sitting outside our colonies, we can send a scout up to, say, this square next to Jamestown, have the scout be ready to always talk to the English, and then we can simply attack all their forces in one turn, and then before the turn ends, have the scout talk to Jamestown and negotiate peace, and the English must always accept so they cannot get a chance to attack us back. That seems kind of exploity, but it's just making use of the game mechanics since the AI does not respect my borders, I might as well not respect it standing around my colonies. So I'm completely fine with abusing it like that, because it's kind of abusing the fact that colonization doesn't have proper borders like it does in Civilization 3, 4, 5, and 6. So the next time that we get a free colonist, we're gonna give them some horses, sail them up to Jamestown, get them off the ship. Once the scout is in position and ready to talk to the English, our forces back in our lands are going to start killing the English left and right. We'll do the same thing for the Dutch so that we can take care of this Dragoon as well. We got another English galleon that we could try to take down. 
We've lost, I think, every fight against the Galleon, though we did, we did win one fight, didn't we? Yeah, we won one fight. Let's give it another shot. Come on, Galleon. We have the advantage, but they have about maybe a 30% chance of winning. Of course we lost, but the privateer never seems to die, so we're alright. And because we have that dry dock in Proxima, he only has to repair for uh, four turns in this case. That's still a lot shorter than like six or eight turns in France. And there's of course a veteran Jagoon ready to defend the privateer from say this soldier standing right there. Just in case. And our army is moving towards Proxima, but in reality I can just go ahead and move the Jagoons over towards the village. I probably don't need the artillery to take down the village. In fact, I could probably take them down this turn, so let's do that. Let's assault. We have veteran as well, so we have another plus 50% strength. Let's bring them on. Wipe them out, very good indeed. The artilleries can only move three tiles on the roads or rivers, because they only have one movement. Dragoons, however, have four movement, so they can move super fast along roads and rivers. And I can wipe out the natives very rapidly. There's an argument to be made for letting this village remain until I have some more Jagoons to turn into veterans, but we have plenty of other native villages, as well as enemy Jagoons th to take on. But of course the villages are a lot easier to attack because they aren't armed with rifles, in most cases. And I want to get the Iroquois out of here as soon as possible so I don't have to worry about them. I'm going to change the production in Safe Harbor over to a fort. We'll get that built eventually. Not immediately because I don't have any carpenters actually assigned over there at the moment. So I accidentally moved a wagon train out of Gunny into the surrounding forest. I was trying to move a wagon train that was down in Proxima. It looks like the Iroquois have decided to take advantage of that. And they're almost certainly going to win. Yep, wagon train destroyed. It didn't have anything on it though, thankfully. But we're going to take these guys down as soon as possible. Oh look, more Jagoons come to stand on my lands. Got a bunch of coats to offload. Let's grab some free colonists. And then let's grab a expert ore miner to turn into a free colonist, most likely. And we got Hernan Cortez, very nice. So now we're going to get treasures from native settlements, always, and in greater abundance. And the king's galleons transport the treasure free of charge. I think we still have to pay taxes on it, though. So we have four options now. We've got Peter's store savant, which might actually be a reasonable choice in this instance. He allows the construction of the custom house, which allows us to sell goods directly to Europe without having to use ships, and it also avoids taxes. It also lets us sell during the revolution too. We also have Ferdinand Magellan. He increases all movement of naval vessels by one. Francis Drake, I think, gives us 50% combat strength of all privateers. Yep, it's reasonable. And Jean de Brebeuf makes all of our missionaries experts. I'm gonna go with Peter Storsevant. Part of this is to also reduce the number of trade advisor founding fathers that are available so that increases the chances of getting Adam Smith so that we can unlock factories, which are the tier 3 building for producing manufactured goods. Let's finish off this village if we can. Hey, 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 we got them both. 1,000 gold worth of treasure, very nice. So we got the treasure back to Safe Harbor. Now we can send it back to their homeland for no extra charge other than the taxes. So we'll do that and we'll gain about 700, 640 gold. With the destruction of that village, most of this land is now secure. Now we need to move the army probably over to Gunny or simply keep the army stationed in Safe Harbor in Gunny and prepare to start destroying the Dragoons surrounding our colonies. I'm probably going to just keep them stationed in Gunny and Safe Harbor to react to any natives that come from the north and to prepare to attack the Dragoons surrounding our colonies because it pissed me off. So right now it sounds like the Dutch are trying to talk to us, but in the game it seems to have glitched out and they can't seem to talk to us, so I'm just going to ignore them. At this point I have no interest whatsoever in speaking to either of these colonies. We are not going to be on friendly terms with any of these people. With the offloading of some coats and cigars, we can afford some more ore miners to become free colonists. I'm starting to make enough money that I can possibly afford a merchant man in not too long. And we got a proper fort built and gunny. Very nice. So after a fort, I think a warehouse expansion is an understandable thing to pick. Let's go with that. Actually, mm, no, that's good. And we got a proper fort in Ironhold as well. And the next thing that we're going to build is going to be a stable to increase the growth of horses here. 
We've gotten Safe Harbor up to 100% Sons of Liberty membership, and Gunny should probably flip on the next turn or two over to 100% as well. That means that we're getting plus two goods to all of our production in these colonies. If we ever add more citizens to these colonies, as long as we've built up enough. Thanks for watching Dealing With It. I'd like to hear any feedback you have about the video in the comments below. I think all feedback is good feedback. If you liked the video, leaving a like would really help the video to reach other people that might also enjoy the video. If you'd like to see more, you can always subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one in episode 11.